Hi everyone, and in today's video we're going to be talking about summer targets for the Northern Hemisphere. Now I'm going to be jumping right into Stellarium, which is a free software that you can get on PC, Mac, and Linux in order to see the night sky. Let's just jump right into it. Alright, so we're starting here, we're looking at the southern sky. And the reason we're looking at the southern sky is because during the summer is when we can see the most southerly objects from the northern hemisphere, and there's definitely a lot to see here. I'll also move a little bit more north as I go through this process to show you some other targets that you can see more often during the year, but are still great targets for beginners uh, when they start. Now. In terms of cameras and framing, I'm going to use the red square, which you can see here in the center. And this is going to represent a 250 millimeter scope with a micro four thirds sensor, or alternatively a 500 millimeter scope on a full frame sensor. And the reason I'm picking this is because this is sort of where most beginners are in terms of what magnification you're going to have with the lenses in your bag or even a small telescope. So first we're gonna zoom in on this entire star. And the reason we're doing this is because this area here, while wide field is actually quite impressive, there's a lot of intermediate targets here, such as the Antares Nebula, the Crab Globular Cluster, um, we have the Open Nebula, which is faint nebulosity. We also have the Blue Horsehead Nebula, which is actually quite faint, along with this other little nebula over here, IC4601. Now these are fun for intermediate targets with a narrow scope, but if you have a wider scope or a lens in terms of like 24 millimeters to like 85 millimeters, you can actually shoot an image of that whole area and with a low f-stop actually get a really colorful result. However, if you want to do some more beginner targets that are with a telescope, you actually want to move over here towards Sagittarius. And there are actually quite a number of fun targets. Specifically, there is the Webb's Cross, Triffid Nebula, and the Lagoon Nebula, which is actually right here, which are fun, easy targets to get. And these are bright objects. They only take about a couple minutes of exposure to really pull them out before you're starting to talk about doing really deep imaging. If we move a little bit higher off the horizon, we get to the small Sagittarius star cloud, which is actually a very big object in the sky. And again, it's a pretty massive star field. As we continue to move more northern, we're starting to get into things like the Omega Nebula over here, which is on a wide field scope, decent amount of hydrogen alpha. But the fun one everyone likes to talk about is the Eagle Nebula, which is located right here. And this is the Pillars of Creation. Now, in order to get the Pillars of Creation, you do need a pretty high magnification scope but even a basic scope is able to get the whole nebula together. And we'll continue the trend of following the Milky Way as we sort of go towards the northern portions. Now, in the center here, there is M26, which is a nice little cluster. We have the Wild Duck Cluster over here. Do not know why it's called a Wild Duck Cluster. But what we really want to do is actually move almost completely to the east, and if I zoom out to show you this, it's directly east, is up here to, and we want to move up here to Seder. Now, before we get all the way up here to Seder, down here is actually the Veil Nebula. This is actually a really classic one that's really nice. Sometimes people will do it in two sections. Um, if you have a wide scope and a full frame sensor or your regular camera, you're actually able to capture this all completely together. If we move up here north, again, similar to May, we had the Crescent Nebula, which is up here. We have a whole region over here of just general nebulosity, but the other big fun target is over here the Pelican and North American Nebula. Again, I don't know why my particular version of Stellarium doesn't actually show it here, but it's right here. Trust me, it's right there. <laughs> if you are looking at some Northern targets because you don't have a Southern sky, there is the Iris Nebula. Now the Iris Nebula itself is quite small. However, this whole region around it is actually dark nebulosity. It's actually a cool photo to get and definitely worth checking out. 
And while perhaps not in the best placement and time of year, we also have the Cassiopeia constellation and all the stuff that's around it. Now, Heart and Soul Nebula are down here in this corner. I would generally recommend not trying for them at this time of year because they are more winter targets. But if you are a beginner and you absolutely must try for this, Andromeda Galaxy has finally risen high enough off the horizon in order to be seen above sort of the haze. And again, as the night goes on, it will actually rise higher and higher and higher. And again, depending on how late you want to be up, if we run to about one o'clock in the morning, we can see that the sky has actually changed quite a bit. Um, in particular, Jupiter and Saturn are now fully visible along with some small meteor showers. And we have Saturn over here, which is actually kind of close to the Saturn Nebula, um, surprisingly. So just make sure you, you get the right one. But as we go over here, we will see, and as you see, as the night goes on, that about midnight is when you're gonna probably get your best chance at getting a lot of these targets before they start to set into the western sky as the night goes on. Now, the western sky is basically looking right out of our galaxy, so there's not a lot out here. But if you do wanna go for a fun little target, there is the great star cluster in Hercules, there's also another star cluster nearby called M92. I can just give you an idea what these things look like. They, they work pretty good like that. And those are some fun targets if you just want something relatively easy. But overall, that you're going to be basically looking south, east as it goes up and over. And then you have in the north where stuff is starting to rise that you might want to try for and this shot here gives you a very good idea of what you're looking at over the summer. You have the Milky Way basically making its way across the sky, rising in the east, heading up overhead, and getting, depending on if you're in June, July, or August, about that far until about 3 a.m. when everything sort of goes away as the sun comes up. So it's still quite short days but that gives you a decent idea. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the solar eclipse on June the 10th. However, for most people watching this video, it's probably already gone by, but there's also the lunar cycle that's available. And if you have a proper solar filter, you can also do some sunspot watching because it tends to be quite active and you have a whole day to do it. So I wish you a cloudless summer and hope to see you again in September where I will do an update for fall targets as the weather gets a little cooler and some of the all-time favorites start to poke up from above the horizon. Until then, thanks for watching.